on AWS, uh, the Hadoop is a uh, is an open free um uh, data framework, so anyone can impl implement that one on your local environment. But however, you, you can imagine that it is it will be a little bit complicated. So if you if you implement that one by yourself, so Amazon EMR is the AWS service that can implement the Hadoop framework for you. Okay, so you can build up your own Hadoop framework with just a few single clicks, and they will set up the the Hadoop server for you autom automatically in in the cloud. Okay, so they have the Hadoop uh, Apache Hadoop uh, on e and that it can be created on, uh, on EMR. So those are cluster of e EC2 instances to serve as a single distributed storage and a processing solution. Okay, and they also have the, they also Im implement Apache Spark on EMR. So those are in-memory optimized execution for faster performance. Okay, so you can implement. Apache Hadoop and also Spark on AWS EMR. Uh, we are not going to try that one in our class, in our lab, because that is a little bit expensive. And also, to be honest, uh, that is um, a little bit complicated. So I just want you to know the basic ideas of the Hadoop and of EMR. <clears throat> but we are not going to try that one in our class. However, in this lab, in today's lab, I also want to, I want to introduce another ETL process that's called Glue. So Glue is another fully management managed ETL service on AWS that can categorize, cleans, enriches, and also move your data between different data stores. Okay, so Glue can help you simplify the ETL process. So uh, for example, so when you have the data in your data lake, and you can ask Glue to automatically crawl the data, identify the potential structure, okay, and also Glue can hopefully can retain the schema of your data, okay, and uh, next you can analyze the data with even like uh, like SQL. So something like that. So Glue, the, the best part of the Glue is that they can do ETL um, automatically. Okay, so they can simplify and also automate different, um, th those difficult and also time consuming data discovery, uh, conversion mapping, and also um, job scheduling tasks. Okay, so in today's lab, we will see that how Glue can help us to do that um, from the background. So you may even not realize that, okay, so Glue is, has already doing the job for us. Okay, so you can use EM EMR or you can use Glue. So, and also to be honest, EMR is pretty expensive. So because you are using a lot of instances uh, from AWS, although the the Hadoop is a free data frame, but uh, data framework, but EMR is not. So there are multiple ways. So when you have your data resource, like you can use the S3 to store your raw data. Okay, the data resource and use S3 to store your raw data. Uh, and you can use the EMR to do the data ETL process. Okay, and also to save the data into your data warehouse to structure data or into database, etc. Or you can use Glue to do the job. Okay, so you can choose either one to do the job. And the Lambda is just another AWS service that help you to trigger those jobs. So we didn't cover Lambda in this class, so you can even know that. The Lambda is a, is a super cool feature that um, can help you do everything that automatically. Okay, so you can use EMR or you can use Glue. So for, by using EMR, you, you have more controls. Um, by using Glue, so everything will be easier. So it, they tend to do the job automatically for you. Our last uh, service, AWS service is Athena. Okay, 
So as I said earlier, so uh, even your data is saved in S3 bucket, so those are data lake and those are highly unstructured. Um, let's say S3, so uh, highly unstructured. You can still query the data with treat that as a standard uh, uh, relational database, okay? Um, use SQL by using the Athena. So Athena provides you the ability to query the data from the SIMAS structured uh, data that in the AW, in the S3 bucket, and it is by using Glue. Okay, so uh, you can load data from S3 into Athena to for queries, and AWS Glue will do the job behind the scene that automatically crawl your data and also transform your data into the, the standard format. So Athena is this interactive query service where you can run those interactive SQL queries on the data in Amazon S3 bucket. So that you don't need to load the data into a database, uh, etc. And they can cross, you can do the cross-region queries. They support ANSI. Remember that we mentioned that one um, in a first in a database class. Uh, ANSI SQL operator and functions. And you don't need to maintain any infrastructures because it is serverless. Okay, so serverless means that so you don't you don't have the structure in the cloud, you just use it when you need it, and it is always there. Okay, so let's see how that works. So you have data in your S3 bucket, so that's the data lake. And AWS uh, glue will crawl your data, will scan your data, and also it will populate to the data catalog. And the data catalog will serve as a meant data repository, so that will this will discovering be the place that they can organize the, the semi-structured data into those structured data format. Um, and once it is, has done the job, and you can use a signal to do the queries. And of course, you can use um, EMR to to do some ETL process, uh, another ETL process, and also you can use a Redshift spectrum. Okay, so which um, can query the data by by using the power of the data warehouse. Okay, and in either way. Uh, so you can connect the Athena to uh, QuickSight or UMR to QuickSight or your, or your Redshift to QuickSight so that you can create some um, visualizations so that you can visually explore the data. Okay, so that is uh, the kind of story that behind the Athena. So basically, so when you have the data in S3, so Glue will automatically discover the, the, the format for you. But of course, you have to tell Glue to do that. And uh, and you can use Athena to do the, uh, to query the data by running SQL. Or you can connect Athena to, um, to QuickSight so you can visualize the data. Okay, uh, so this is not the only way that we can do that. So there are multiple ways. So there are multiple pipelines that you can play with a signal or even without a signal. So for example, when you have your data resource uh, loaded into your S3 bucket, uh, you can use a signal to do some uh, random ad hoc uh, data queries. Okay, of course the glue will uh, do the job behind the scenes. Or you can just use the EMR to do the ETL because EMR by using EMR, so it gives you more controls that you can specify that what you want. So um, so that will give you more controls than glue. And you can put the data into either a new S3 bucket, or you can drop that one into Redshift, or you can even put that one into a database, etc. Um, if you choose to put that one into an, to S, another S3 bucket, you can also use uh, a signal to query the result, okay? And um, either way, so that when you connect uh, a signal to your S3 bucket, 
and you can always visualize the, the data via a scene to your S3 bucket, from your S3 bucket. Okay, so a scene is also can serve as a bridge between QuickSight and also your S3 bucket. Uh, or you can, once you load data to Redshift, of course you can also connect Redshift to QuickSight directly so that you can visually explore the data. Okay, so after this class, I really wish you to know that there's no single way to analyze a big data. So there are multiple ways. So choose the way that fit you. So fit your budget, fit your timeline, fit your data type. Okay, so uh, you can use single database, you can use a cluster of database, or you can use data warehouse. And if you have unstructured data, and you can, of course, use data link. Um, if you are using data link, uh, you may consider using a Cena to query your data. Um, and also you can use EMR, so which uh, it will be more complicated. And no matter which type of the data container storage you are using, uh, you can always use QuickSight to visualize the data from different data storage or di different data containers.